so very good morning to all dignitaries faculty members i deepak mohor assistant professor department of computer engineering purnima institute of Enge en engineering and technology welcome you all to third short term training program under aqis on image processing and its application which we are starting from 21st of september it is a one week program so it will last by 26th of september so first of all i welcome dr rajesh kumar sir chief guest of the program he is a professor in electrical engineering department of mnit jaipur i also welcome dr dinesh goyal sir principal and director konima institute of engineering technology welcome sir i also welcome dr gautam singh sir registrar purnima institute of engineering technology dr pravin gupta sir coordinator of this very short term training program on image processing and its application and uh, i am very happy to announce that this is the third short term training program in the series on image processing and its application we have already conducted two sttp program on the same title this is the last and third one which we are conducting from today so to start this program i would like to welcome dr dinesh goel sir principal and director purnima institute of nj technology who has been a driving force behind conducting such programs so i welcome dinesh sir dinesh goel sir over to you uh thank you deepak sir uh am i audible yes sir you are audible yes sir fine so uh good morning everyone first of all my heartfelt uh, thanks dr rajesh kumar professor mnit uh, to uh for his kind consent to chair the inaugural ceremony of this uh, third sttp uh, ast sponsored sttp under aqis on image processing being hosted by pune university of engineering technology so before coming to this uh, sctv i'll just take you to the small journey of pit in last 2 3 years and so uh, so uh, friends uh, pit was established in year 2007 and it is one of the youngest engineering college in rajasthan but the journey has been uh, far uh, Um, extensive than being a young institution. As on date, we are having all our programs eligible programs and we are accredited. We are the first one in the Rajasthan, whole Rajasthan, as a private institution to get NBA accreditation for our civil engineering program. We have got our computer engineering program twice NBA accredited. Uh, we are NAC accredited institute in Rajasthan. and we are currently ranked fourth in rajasthan though we are we were uh, we were uh, we were the 76th institution opened in rajasthan but we are ranked fourth right now this is all efforts of our team members who have worked day and night hard for achieving quality in academics and placements and all other activities uh not only that uh, our team is quite focused on doing conducting research and development activities and uh, nurturing of our uh, faculty members and peers this year only uh, uh, we have organized seven fdps sponsored by uh, ast uh, aqis aict atal techcube and apart from that we have also organized fdps uh, self motivated by the team members like mr deepak mod puja ma'am and all the other team members just to share all of you that pit has achieved grants of more than 50 lakh rupees in last two years in various domains of research and development uh, infrastructure augmentation under modrobs uh, uh, crs projects uh, uh, getting funding from for what you call fdps sttps student development programs um, pit has created uh, good benchmarks and challenges for institutions which are quite older to them in rajasthan and has made a good strong foothold on the grounds uh with quality intake being taken every year in terms of admissions we are getting good number of admissions this year also even in pandemic uh, yes last year we had out of 330 we had around uh, uh, 309 admissions this year we are already crossed 300 admissions 
uh, by the uh, time we close this thing, we may be able to complete three hundred admissions plus EWS plus uh, TWS. So we'll be able to achieve around three hundred admissions. This is what uh, uh, figure which we, we are aspiring for, and this is all efforts of uh, the team members of Pune uh, Institute of Energy Technology. Uh, the one outcome of this effort, which we are discussing in the next six days, is the SGTP, which is being organized here. This is a, a series of SGTPs, uh, which was approved to Dr. Pramin Gupta from AISD, AQIS, on the agenda of image processing and uh, applications. So we had a challenge to plan uh, SGTPs because of this pandemic. It, it was advised by SGTP to do it twice or thrice. So that uh, we can uh, have better uh, learning of people on the same course which ASD has given to us. Uh, looking into that, uh, our team members have planned a very uh, robust uh, schedule of next six days, which includes image processing applications, its uh, application in deep learning, its image reconstruction techniques, image uh, analysis part. And I we believe, uh, as per the feedback of last two FDPs, People have shown very good response on these FDPs. Uh, they have uh, they have desired to join back again, but as per ASC norms, the experts, the members, those who are eligible are only those who are not attended first two FDPs. So we will be again forcing a good number of uh, participants who will be attending this FDP in the next uh, six days. I hope experts like uh, Dr. Uh, Rajesh Kumar and other experts from NITs, IITs, ISC Bangalore, uh, all other premier and private institutions in Rajasthan and India will be uh, uh, sharing their academic expertise and research expertise in the domain. And we will be creating good manpower by these such efforts so that we can have a better technology enabled teachers in our academic systems in the country. With these words, I welcome all the participants again and I thank Manoj sir for this, uh, Deepak sir for this opportunity. And I welcome Rajesh Kumar sir again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, Dinesh sir. So, uh, with, uh, with the with these words of wisdom, I would like to call now Dr. Rajesh Kumar sir, chief guest of the program. Before I call him, I would like to introduce him. Dr. Rajesh Kumar sir received his B.Tech degree from NIT Kurukshetra an MTech degree in power system and PhD degree in intelligent system from MNIT Jaipur. He was a postdoctorate research fellow in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at National University of Singapore from 2009 to 2011. Currently, he has been working as a professor with the Department of Electrical Engineering MNIT Jaipur. Dr. Kumar research interest focus on intelligent system, machine intelligence, power management, smart grid, robotics. Dr. Kumar has published over 450 research articles and has supervised 20 PhD and more than 30 MTech theses. He has 12 patents to his name. He received three academic awards, 12 best paper awards, six six best thesis award, four professional awards and 25 student award. So with this, sir, I welcome Dr. Rajesh Kumar, sir, again, as chief guest of this inaugural session. And I welcome, sir, for his words of wisdom. Over to you, Rajesh, sir. OK, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good morning to all professors and the uh, participants in the function. Uh, uh, Good morning, Professor Dinesh Goyal, and thanks uh, the whole PIT team to invite me uh, for for this uh, short-term training uh, program for the teachers. Uh, it's nice to see that like uh, something on image processing being conducted again and again. Uh, it's a very uh, demanding area, not only of the computer science, but yes, uh, in all the discipline of uh, engineering, you talk about uh, electronics, electrical, mechanical, civil, uh, environment, bioinformatics, you just name it. People are try trying to solve uh, various problems uh, by taking some images and try to solve all those things. 
and it has been a, always a great pleasure to work with the uh, uh, purnima group uh, i'm connected with purnima group since its inception when the first college was foundation stone was laid down i was there and uh, many of uh, our faculty hod uh, director and uh, uh, vice uh, your uh, uh, admin bodies uh, people they are being a product of my laboratory so it's always been a, a great uh, feel when i uh, talk to the people uh, of uh, purnima group as such uh, in academia and yeah as uh, uh, reported by the uh, director uh, professor dinesh goel they are i mean is doing good conducting various workshops and this is again a responsibility of uh, we educationalists that to update the faculty uh, about the new things which are coming up in the environment coming up in the system so that once they are updated then they can update the uh, students uh, who are connected directly or indirectly to the institutions and then they uh, produce the people ready for the jobs which are now being changing very fast day by day so it's a, it's a timely uh, uh, organized workshop and it's a series what was being uh, said uh, it's it's great if you have series then you can plan the things in much better way otherwise what happen in most of the fdps there is only one or two lecture which may not be sufficient enough to share the things in the detail uh, i was going through the uh, curricula and it's nicely organized and i congratulate the organization team who are organizing this whole structure more we discuss once we have we start the session uh, uh, right now i can say my uh, best wishes for the smooth uh, conduction of this course and i'm sure that uh, people who are attending this course they will be benefited in a big way thank you very much uh, for inviting me uh, for this uh, program thank you very much thank you very much rajesh sir and i extend my sincere thanks for these kind words and uh, your uh, blessings your motivations are always with us and with these blessings and motivations uh, we will be doing good and uh, these 6 days will be very learning experience for all of us so over to you pravin sir hello good morning to everybody good morning sir i am dr pravin gupta i am the coordinator for this workshop and now i am here to present vote of thanks uh, i would like to sincerely thanks all the participants who have been given their consent for the joining of this workshop and i hope that a good number of participants will be joining this fdp program http program in the last previous two Uh, programs which have been conducted in the same series, same topic. I expect the many of the participants who have already joined pre our previous STT programs uh, may have again joined it for the enhancement of their knowledge. Any STT program is and uh, combined efforts of the trainers, professors delivering their knowledge at the same time uh, at the recipient end. Uh, the participants who are gaining the knowledge and experience from the uh, research scholars professors <laughs> etc in this series of sttv program uh, there are total 18 sessions and i would like to thanks all the uh, persons who have given their consent who have devoted their time and valuable time and prepare for a lecture to deliver in this sttt program i will again once again thank you for all the uh, resource person who given their consents i would like to thanks uh, our management team which includes our chairman sir dr shashikant uh, mr shashikant singh sir our director sir rahul singh sir our uh, director and principal of piet dr dinesh goel sir and head of department mr deepak mohan and all the team members who are working to make it successful since last many days so i would like to thanks all the management team who have actively working in the last few days for the successful completion of this this thing 
I would like to thank Dr. Uh, Rajesh Kumar, Professor MNIT, who have given their consent for the inauguration session and joined us here today as a chief guest uh, and delivered their thoughts for this STDP program. So I would like to thank Dr. Rajesh Kumar for their valuable words and we will try to implement each and not last but not the least i would like to thanks all the persons who are directly directly associated with this sttv program and trying to make it successful event uh, so i would like to thanks all these persons thank you very much i expect you all the participants will enjoy it will learn from this stt program thank you very much thanks for thank you very much praveen sir so uh, i extend my sincere thanks to all the dignitaries of this inaugural function uh, for uh, sparing your valuable time with us and uh, starting this stt stt program so before we start the first technical session i would like to brief about this stt which is starting from today and it will last by 26th of September. In this short term training program, we are going to have 18 technical sessions now, which will start from today, 10 o'clock. The first session will start on introduction to digital image processing and intelligent system. This session will be a keynote address on various researches, studies which have been done which are being done in this area. This session will be taken by Dr. Dr. Rajesh Kumar, Professor of MNIT, Jaipur, which we are going to start in short while now in five minutes. The second session will be, start, will be started today of day one, which will be on image steganography and implementation of steganography from 11.45 to 1.15. And the last session will be conducted 2 to 3.30 p.m. today on image enhancement, restoration, and segmentation. So in this way, all technical sessions will be conducted every day from 10 to 11.30 first session, 11.45 to 1.15 second session, and 2 to 3.30 last session. First two, two days we have actually scheduled image processing and uh, natural language processing. And then from day three, we will start working upon images using deep learning. So image classification using neural network, convolutional neural network, recurrent neural network. And in the last two days, we will discuss about various case studies, various areas of research where the lot of work is being done in image processing using deep learning, such as uh, generative adversarial network, face aging, moving object detection, video analysis, implementation of deep learning, feature extraction from convolutional neural network, image reconstruction, digital deep learning for medical applications, and many uh, similar topics will be conducted in last two sessions. So we can understand first two days for image processing, middle two days for learning the technology, underlying technology and concepts of CNN, RNN, ANN, and last two days will be on advanced topics such as image reconstruction, GANs, moving object detection, face aging, and many like medical imaging, these all applications will be discussed. We are going to have practical session in every session, technical session. So the each session is of one and a half hour, where we are expecting 45 to 50 minute theory or underlying concept will be explained. And then the practical implementation of those concepts will also be shown to you using uh, Python programming on Google Colab. So we are going to use uh, SKLearn library aggressively, deep learning libraries and machine learning libraries for the implementation on Google Colab using Python. And I am very happy to announce that uh, total 267 participants have been registered in this STTP. So we are expecting a good number which will start joining now from 10 o'clock onwards. And uh, we are going to have a good exposure of all these concepts. I would also request participants to concentrate in online STTPs because it is found that 
it is very difficult to concentrate online while it is being taught so i would request participant to concentrate focus after each session the study material will also be provided to you over mail the google colab file will also be shared with you so that you can practice we will also give data sets on which you can practice we will provide all the materials all the video recording also which will be available on youtube channel which you can access after completion of each day study material will be provided attendance will be taken of each session attendance will be taken and recorded automatically so no manual attendance will be taken we have been using tools to record the attendance so there is no need to worry about the attendance we will share the attendance also after a day at the end of the day and uh, e certificate will also be provided after successful completion of 6 days of short term training program so i am expecting enthusiastic participation active learning and lot of discussion on the topics because we are not only the participants we are teachers also so we need to impart this knowledge which we are gaining from this sttp to the students who will become future of our country with this hope i am expecting uh, the first session now so for the first session which we are starting now the first session is on introduction to digital image processing and intelligent system so for conducting the first technical session i would like to welcome dr rajesh kumar professor mnit jaipur to conduct this session over to you rajesh sir now okay uh, thank you prof and uh, i think i am audible to everyone uh, i'm sharing my screen uh, should we wait for 5 minutes or shall we start because 9:55 yeah we could we could wait for 5 minutes because people will join uh, more block yeah so because the scheduled time is uh, 10 yeah. yes. so hopefully more people will join yes. so i we, we can wait for another few minutes yes sir main way you can set the things uh i hope my screen is visible to everyone yes sir it is visible okay okay fine fine okay so we uh, just four four minutes more and so i i expect like they are from all the disciplines or or they are from only specific computer science or electronics no they are from multiple branches sir yeah uh, that's great that's really great because uh, th that's basically a uh, tendency like people from electrical or mechanical they are scary of images and all these things so uh, it will it will be good like if they are from all the disciplines that's nice yes sir so we take it like one hour on the lecture and then 5 10 minutes on the on the theory yeah yeah we can do that yeah fine
Okay, so let's start it and uh, good morning to uh, one and all uh, in this session on intelligent systems. Uh, we can apply intel intelligence or int make make a system as intelligent system uh, anywhere. Uh, we'll take in this session. We'll talk about various aspects of it and then how. So certain applications where you can use your machine learning or AI to make any system an intelligent system. Uh, and then we take some of the case studies, uh, some of the work which we have done may be helpful for you. So it's a more on the uh, like insight uh, of, the, of the systems, how to make them intelligent, some kind of machine learning and AI, what are the various areas of the, of the scope of uh, research and all that and then some case studies and then at the end uh, uh, if you have any query I, uh, I will be happy to answer your queries uh, so let's start with intelligent system so how to proceed for that uh, I hope I'm audible right yes sir you're audible sir. okay okay fine thank you so uh, say uh, I have a uh, I have a simple a car which is a toy car and then i want to make it as a make it a smart car or 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 self-sustained car so what are the things when we try to make any system like when we talk about intelligent system so uh, once i have this then what i have to do is i put i, I put some kind of a digitized system to, to 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 sense something so i put some kind of a sensors or some kind of a, uh, devices which can give me certain input out of it so any device uh, a car is there toy car i put the embed sensors on it i place some sensors on it the sensors give me uh, uh, through some kind of a recording medium uh, the sensors generate certain kind of uh, in, uh, outputs maybe in terms of a data or maybe in terms of uh, some kind of a signals which i acquire and uh, once i have it those signals uh, on my uh, on my storage unit uh, the signals may be in the form of a data uh, image is also a data if, um, I, if you have already attended these courses i think you are aware of it so I pipeline that uh, i have installed certain kind of a um, devices and then from there i capture certain signals and the signals are stored in the form of the data once I have a data with me, and let's say, say if it's enormous data, what I'll do is I, I apply certain kind of a processing. So if it is image, I can go for image processing technique. If it is a signal, signal processing technique, if it is data, then data filtering techniques and uh, all those uh, things I'll do there uh, to find out or to capture meaningful information out of it. And once I have that with me, uh, then I use certain kind of uh, learning uh, methods so maybe i use artificial intelligence or i use machine learning or i use data analytics or i use statistical analytics to find out the uh, find out the relation between the various features or we uh, try to connect the various doors which are not as such visible to me uh, or i'm able not able to find out directly but yes if i use these techniques like ai machine learning or uh, some kind of analytics technique i'll try to find out what is the connection between the those features or those those parameters and then i use those parameters to infer something out of it something which is hidden out of it so what i have is some kind of a display which give me a level of a confidence that yes what i have captured through some mathematics uh that is true and then i reuse it to convert or make my machine automated or make my machine intelligent so i start with a simple simple car model and then i process i i follow a pipeline and i reach to a, a model or a car which you can say maybe a self-driven car or it may be a automated car or it may be an intelligent car uh, one of the very simple example you can see here, uh, this one is intelligency. One kind of intelligency is there that if, if you, you know, modern cars, if you are sitting and you are, if you are not putting your belt there, 
uh, it give you some kind of a beep sound that okay put on your belt okay and then you say okay it's easy means like if i'm not plugging uh, where i'm sitting just uh, it may be one sensor there that so i plug it then it sense it and it will not give that sound but just just imagine that in the same car if you are driving alone and uh, the beep if you are not plugging your seat belt there is a beep sound but when you plug in uh, your seat belt the sound stops but in the same car there is another person who is sitting next to you in the front seat so once you plug in and if that person is not plug in the seat belt again it make a sound so how it sense there are two person or one person or something like that these are something which is uh, which are expected here also we have sensors we have some data we have certain information we process that information the media of processing may be different it uh, varies from the complexity to complexity uh, it depends upon how uh, how much intelligence you want in uh, i'm taking a car as an example because it's uh, everyone is using in day to day life they can they are seeing all these things uh, even modern cars you can find there are apps they give you information about how you are driving how much time you are putting a brake how better you are driving so it enhances the quality of um, quality of uses uh, it make you also uh, ed educated about the system how to use that system in most proper way and these are the certain properties of your intelligent system and this is the one kind of a pipeline which is required uh, to make any system as an intelligent system and the, every part has its important and the one of the important part is your machine learning and ai nowadays it's a buzzword uh, when we move into it you'll find that a Uh, a good arrangement of uh, mathematics of which we have studied in our high school classes so the arrangement of mathematics uh, in a okay. most proper way mm. and that uh, give us a certain level of uh, confidence that okay how we can extract the things so two things are basically connected here where we have a uh, very good computing power uh, is there an issue hello hello am i audible ha uh, yes sir you are audible yeah is there any issue because i i i can hear many some of some of the students may be okay 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 so we request people to keep their uh, we speak at one at a time so that we can understand each other we can if they want to say something we can listen them at the end so uh, we have two things uh, thanks to your material people and electronics and computing we have very good computing power and the second one is our classical mathematics so that is presented in one or another form and they are combined to give us a, uh, another domain which is now being commonly used or uh, in all the applications that is ai and your machine learning so some aspects of it uh, what are these ai and all these things uh, maybe you are aware of just to recap the things and some applications so i'm taking some applications from the medical science or some other domains and then we try to understand various legs of it followed by the experience so this one is one picture uh, taken from a paper of uh, skundu and uh, this one is a uh, image uh, and uh, this one is image certain kind of biological image and it is doctor says that no osteoarthritis in 3 years by seeing this image okay uh, where as uh, if i see another image uh, it says that there is a chances of osteo uh, osteoarthritis in 3 years okay uh, and when i keep these two images together now it's very difficult to find out what to wear and here our machines computing systems comes into the picture can they help us in defining the things yes they can help us and they can help us in in various ways and then ai see the things in the time frame that okay in that this is the image uh, which is no stereo 30s and that how the various parameter changes and then we can predict that okay uh this one is developing like this then osteo 30 is in the 3 years or 4 years or something like that so these are the some time stamped 
images which uh, a we process through some algorithms or machine intelligence so it's not a like uh, when i when i present these things to the doctors and they say that okay oh you want to replace the doctors no this is uh, assisting to to the doctors so it helps them to make it, make them make their decisions more accurate and all these things so these are assistive uh, devices it's not a replacing the things so the so this one is one one kind of a nice application in medical science. A uh, lot of being done in predictions. Yeah, so predictions can be from any from anywhere to anywhere. Prediction of a stock exchange, prediction of electricity uh, uh, generation, prediction of the load, prediction of a disease. Uh, many things are there. Even human predictions are being done. And one of the great work was uh, being done by Kosinski on the prediction. And just, just to, I'm taking these examples so that like we are daily connected with these things so we can understand that how important are, are these models and these algorithms for our life. And in 2012, Kosinski proved that with the uh, Facebook likes, only 68 Facebook likes, uh, you can predict the skin of a color of a person with the 95% accuracy. As such, this one is like if you, as such, if you see it, it looks like an, uh, it's a, how it is possible. But yes, uh, what is there being, uh, there are various features which are there, which are hidden features, which are not visible as such, but when processed correctly with these algorithms, we can come out with some kind of uh, amazing outcomes of all those data points and all that. And they have, they have more and more experiments uh, and with a very good accuracy they have proved these experiments uh, like biasing to the parties orientation sexual orientations and and the skin colors and all that so so they talk about many things just for by watching few likes there they talk about your intelligence your beliefs your uh, your drug uses or or anything and if you have more likes then you have more in more about yourself so we call uh, this one as a as a human modeling basically so these data uh, these are the stream of the data which have been taken and then they processed correlations are developed developed and then from there more and more complex uh, predictions can be done from there and not only about you but uh, more likes are there than we can even predict about your friend. So, I mean, it's like we are not aware, maybe not aware of your friend directly, but just watching your likes, we can predict about your friend, or if more likes are there, then we can predict about your parents, and then if go further than their parents, and likewise. So this one is enormous uh, things are coming up with this, all what is happening around us. And all these are possible when, you, uh, when we have a, uh, certain kind of a data and then we have certain kind of a algorithms uh, which are we can say intelligent algorithms. so one of the main segment of this whole processing is your artificial intelligence we have intelligence and when we take this intelligence on our computing system we talk about the arti artificial intelligence so uh, a definition was proposed like intelligence exhibited by the machine and uh, the uh, machine they learn they interact with the environment uh, there are various in types of information we receive from the environment and then uh, we try to develop certain kind of uh, uh, analysis or algorithms to extract that information which we are receiving from the environment and there are various modes of it so there are certain goals of ai uh, we need to understand those goals of ai uh, one uh, goal is it must deduce uh, reasons and it must be able to uh, uh, solve that particular problem. That is one one goal of uh, AI. Can we uh, uh, develop, uh, can we use certain kind of L, um, reasoning or method can develop a methodology? Are we able to solve the problem? Second goal is can we represent the knowledge in any form? So. Uh, since this one is image processing, so we have images. So can we represent that ima uh, image? Is there some knowledge from this uh, image in one form or another form? Can we plan the things? Uh, we have certain information, and uh, from those informations, can we 
plan things out of it to solve certain kind of things there. Uh, na natural language processing is another one that is can a machine uh, talk to uh, humans or so machine is talk, able to understand human and all that. You have certain session in this course where people talk in depth about your NLP. Uh, another goal is can we plan the motion or manipulations? So manipulators and robotics and these are machines are we are talking about. So can they uh, be planned? They can they decide? Can they map their motions and all that? Uh, that is also a goal of your AI. Perception is important factor which is building up. That okay, we have so many in uh, so many inputs from the sensors. Can can the machine develop a perception out of those inputs? Uh, we talk about the two intelligence there, social as well as the general intelligence. And then we need our machines to be creative also. Are they creative or not uh, in, in developing a few things there? Are they now they are working same as how they are programmed? Or or, or they uh, they create their own uh, own kind of uh, formula on, on understanding, or they can create some new algorithms to 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 give a better results and likewise. So uh, these are the certain goals of your AI, uh, which are expected when you say that okay, uh, I have developed some AI um, based uh, uh, system. So we are expecting something out of all these things there itself. So there is a long journey uh, evolution of AI in many phases. Uh, initially, it was reactive machines. So let's understand what are reactive machines. Uh, reactive machines uh, they don't have any kind of uh, memories so they take the input process it and send it out okay so they can just uh, uh, they react based upon the current situations and then take the input uh, from the environment and then according to they take action the action is defined in their system so those are the reactive machine uh, various categories can be put there uh, some kind of example is there that playing a chess uh, uh, with uh, and 1997 one example of this one and then uh, the modifications comes into it and that is basically AI with limited memory uh, where uh, we take some of the few data uh, we include those data and then uh, we represent we need environment to represent it and from the past data from the environment we try to make uh, there is a memory which is a limited not very huge and from there we try to infer the relations and come out with the some certain kind of solution and what is the future here future is the theory of mind so uh, we are here ai with limited and we are looking future with the theory of mind and the, that is basically representation of the world uh, representation of the other agents interacting uh, other agents with agents means there are many entities how they are uh, understanding each other and how my machines are reacting based upon their inputs. So uh, how our mind uh, works as such, and uh, that is the theory of mind. We are, so that is the future of it. Uh, we are moving towards that direction, and then there is another improvement uh, which is expected in in, in further uh, in AI, and that is basically self awareness. Can we make machines? self-aware means they are aware of emotions they are able to anticipate reactions of others they are able to anticipate the dangerous things and good things or bad things so introducing emotions into the machines or something like that so this one is a four major uh, one can say class or one can say milestones uh, of your ai uh, and where is AI? And the question is there, uh, and you can see it is everywhere. Uh, it is there in healthcare, big way, because uh, that's why this one is now being used in a very uh, two, two or three areas are there which uh, make uh, AI so popular throughout the world. And now you can see a lot of webinars, a lot of courses. Uh, your Curricula is designing a new uh, engineering branches uh, uh, branch as AI is coming up. Uh, the reason is very obvious. Uh, you find it a very great application in uh, three things there. One is data analytics. Another one is marketing, sales, and healthcare. These are the major means. Like okay, others are there. They are using, but 
uh, very recent means like last few years uh, the industry they are using ai in, uh, in these domains and that make it very popular though it is being used everywhere like you can see in healthcare lot of applications robotics education transportation marketing and sales and data analytics and you can see this where i this covers uh, many of the domain it's not uh, not confined to a computer science uh, only but uh, all the domains of engineering medicals or uh, medical uh, uh, your commerce and then uh, other domains also there so if I, we talk about, if we subdivide these things, so you can see a healthcare, you can talk about parent care, or oh, sorry, patient care, uh, how being the patient is being taken cared, how the, what is the mode of actions being taken, what is the uh, time stamped actions being taken by the doctors and the people so that patient can be corrected in a more good way. Diagnostics, a big way it is being used in diagnosis because uh because of the uh a lot of a lot of uh, diseases are there doctors are less population is more they need uh more information in less time to um, diagnose any 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 kind of a problem with the patient so they try to use uh, these tools to uh to ensure or to correct their uh findings as r d it is being used and now healthcare in management of your uh, hospitals and all these things so it is being used there uh, if you talk about the data analytics on the other side you will find in predictive analytics social media analytics data engineering language enormous applications are there uh, transportation you can have vehicle management autonomous vehicle traffic management in education and now it is very important if, uh, this domain is opened up a lot of things are being taken there that okay observing the students uh, checking their interest uh, checking their uh, psychological factors uh, checking their other other issues uh, when we talk about the education uh, these are being uh, used uh, marketing and sales uh, uh, it, it drive it like anything uh, you can see many things there and one other simple example uh, because you use computers and just you search uh, any good say a uh, say a search there and uh, you just check it in on any of the platform some online selling platform okay search particular brand and then you come out of it and next day you just open any social media or any platform you will find that brand is moving in front of you so that means they are tracking the things uh, and it's not like a person is sitting there who is tracking it's automated being done and uh, they ensure you that you go for the go for the purchase of that particular brand so that's a, that's a basically digital marketing nowadays it's coming up so a lot and lot of applications are being done and uh, every day new applications are coming where we are using ai in one or another form there and they are interrelated somewhere intermixed somewhere like robotics is used in now healthcare uh, you can see that robots are operating the patients where the doctor is sitting somewhere in another country patient is in some another country and they are doing it uh, or they are assisting the humans to enhance their power so they are intermixed it's not like uh, just simple robotics alone a manipulator or some kind of a toy but it's Robotics in healthcare, robotics in transport. Okay, data analytics we use in transport, healthcare we use data analytics. So they are intermixed uh, domains also, but we use AI as a part to solve these things there. There are many subcategories of AI uh, applications or domains people have divided depending upon how they are using it basically. So in language processing, they use it uh, classification, translation, data extraction they use uh, machine learning so these are the subcategories of ai so deep learning and predictive analytics speech they use text to speech or speech to text vision that is machine vision or image recognition and identification they use in planning they use in export developing expert systems they use in robotics these are the various subcategories and how you are using it that is basically uh, uh, important term to be understand that like how they are using all these things so when we 
summarize all these structures and there are various domains uh, there are various techniques now coming to the mathematical formulation because computer we use computing system uh, to mm, do all these jobs and then when we talk about the computing system we mean to say that okay there are certain algorithms and algorithms means there is certain level of a certain kind of a mathematics we have developed there so we use these are uh, these techniques there supervised heuristic meta heuristic unsupervised reinforcement markov decision process these are certain uh, mathematical formulations in one or another way uh, being used uh, to solve these all different types of the problems there depending upon the uh, uh, depending upon what are my inputs and uh, depending upon what is the desired and uh, based upon that we use certain kind of a uh, certain kind of mathematical arrangements and that is divided into these categories so we'll talk on these categories like uh, one is their reinforcement learning so uh, reinforcement learning i have taken few images from various papers and uh, uh, various resources from the net so from here you can see here that okay first observation of an agent is there you can see a small robot is there and there are two environments so it move it has to move so it uh, it 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 take action so action using certain policy so policy is just i have to move so it take an action and, and it moves to say uh, right of uh, right side and then it goes to the fire and the fire is basically a not a good sign so it's a bad sign so it will be penalized okay so it is a reward which is a negative reward okay so it is a reward which is negative reward and uh, the negative reward uh, help uh, this uh, this robo or this bot to understand it that okay this is not good i have to change my policy next time i'll not go to the right side i'll go to the left side so this is something like a reinforcement learning where my environment make me to learn and you can take the be another very good example is uh, you can say the way you learn to uh, drive a bicycle of your own. So when you start driving it, when you fell down on one side, then you automatically learn how to make a balance so that because you fell down on right side, then next time you can understand or you make certain change in your policy that, okay, when my bicycle is going to the right side, I have to tilt my body on the left side so that there is a balance. So the, this one is a mathematical formulation. You can see here the agent take an action, okay, uh, which is shown here in this, or shown here in this figure. So agent uh, take any action there, and then the action goes to the environment. Environment send two things uh, uh, according to that action. One is the reward, and uh, reward may be positive and it may be a negative. You can consider the negative reward as a uh, as a as a punishment uh, and then uh, it also gives certain new observations and then that uh, that intelli that algorithm or that agent receives two things that what is the reward and what are the observation then what it will do it will do certain method algorithm uh, to or and modify its policy so that the ultimate job is to acquire as many as rewards and this is how we learn the things so this one is a one kind of uh, um, AI technique which is used and this one nowadays this one is the most popular technique uh, being used that is how to learn the things taking the input from input from the environment as such uh, and why why this one is popular uh, so to understand it if we go back to the previous slide uh, you can see here the first term is supervised this one is a learning uh, supervised is a method learning method Supervised means uh, somebody is there, sitting there, who is telling you that, okay, this one is correct and this one is not correct. That means that there is a person or there is an entity which is uh, uh, which make a judgment whether your outcomes are good or bad. So that means uh, if I'm doing a say, classification kind of a problem, I have images and they, those images are labeled like this this image is uh, i'm taking one image and i'm saying that okay this image is uh, uh, one can say uh, it's a 
the data is basically suffering from certain disease and the second image is not suffering the next image is suffering and non suffering so i have thousand images and each image is having certain kind of a tag or we call it cell label and that means when label means that gives me output whether this image is uh, uh, suffering or not suffering kind of thing or uh, so that means there is somebody to tell you okay and and then we use our approaches uh, we train uh, we make our system learn on those images so that when the next image is given to it it automatically find out whether it's suffering or not suffering so this one is a kind of a classification for you know? but what is the issue here issue is uh, each data is labeled and that labeling is done by some so say if i am working on a medical images i have 10000 images then i need somebody to give me the label on it you as you are a computer and then for that you have to hire a doctor which is costly so if you are working on a supervised you need a lot of data which are labeled which end up with some cost factor to it these are costly things the second category is your unsupervised where where there is no label to it you have data and then you try to find out uh, find out the uh, some kind of relations to categorize them these are some kind of a bit common example is a clustering method called clustering technique so these are a cheaper basically because you need not to pay somebody to to uh, to give a label to 10000 images and then reinforcement is something much much kind of structure where you take certain decision and the environment itself tell you whether you are working correct or not so the, there is a correction factor which is there from the environment itself so this is how this is why people move from the supervised to unsupervised because of the availability of the data and all that those things but they all has its own limitations benefits advantage and disadvantage depending on what the problem we need to decide that which method is good for our things and then comes the large scale machines large scale machines we have real world we have video database okay and then video database then is a human who can uh, annotator who can give a certain kind of uh, annotation on it then there is a human reviewer that who can say okay this one is good or, uh, or bad and then we have a, we have a, a database and then from there we divide the database into two part for training we take one and for for testing we take another and then we develop a Uh, some kind of a detection algorithm and then we modify those algorithms and the process keep on doing all these things so enormous data enormous information uh, limitation of the uh, uh, knowledge in one form but these small small factors in a different form they are connected to develop a big uh, 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 data which is properly labeled and uh, and the algorithms are good enough or fast enough to give you a good solutions there and there comes another area these are the recent things i'm talking right now which are coming i hope i expect that okay basic things are already known to you so i'm just touching on the things which are coming in a big way and this one is another thing which is very popular nowadays you know that is known as a deep learning uh, earlier what we do what is the difference here you can understand it uh, from this this aspect uh, that earlier what we do we take the image and then we extract features out of it okay so we apply some kind of feature extraction techniques and then we have those features and from that features we develop a neural network okay and uh, uh, and neural network we use it as a, for a classification okay classification means if i train a neural network on the images of dog and cat so next time when once it is trained i pass the image then it will give me a uh, uh, output that it is a dog or cat so it is like that so there is a lot of dependency upon the feature extraction methods and algorithms in in the beginning itself what comes here in in this processing that they say that okay why we do this stuff like this okay why we do it like this 
instead of taking like this why uh, why not take the image as it is and let the algorithm to take the cover, capture the things of its own let the algorithm or the, the network it's uh, to develop uh, feature relations and everything instead of i extract the features manually and then feed it to the network and that's that's why this deep uh, uh, learning comes into the picture and uh, there is a strong hypothesis behind it and there is a certain kind of a proof from the medical also like uh, when we see an image uh, it's never like our brain processes the whole image as such uh, it for it identify the sections small small sections to the image and then combine into into one and then recognize it so the same kind of a concept being used there so you can see that uh, nine in 1980s era network it's a just one one hidden layer network and what is now deep learning deep means it's a earlier we believe in the fat network fat means the network we have many features so network become fatty now what we are thinking no 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 don't don't worry instead of take a fatty network take a take a take a thin and a long network so that's basically deep you, you are moving many layers into it so you can see here on the right hand side there are many hidden layers there so you give an image and it will give an output and there are various approaches are being used there like you can see here your cnn and all these algorithms are being used so those techniques of mathematics like convolution feature mapping or uh, your data mapping those are being used here to develop these algorithms there uh, this one is very uh, being used in a very big way uh, in robotics as such uh, because this one is a live example of automated systems and a lot of dependencies are there and they are being used uh, uh, not only the industry uh, mechanical industries but now in in healthcare also so you can see they are making a very critical surgeries like heart surgeries or brain surgeries where the accuracy is required as very very high and and you can just imagine a small error uh, error can, can be uh, fatal to anybody so uh, they are uh, live example where three four branches are working uh, in cohesion your mechanical experts are there your electronics experts are there your computing people are there and your electric drive people are there and accuracy at each level is is to be taken care to bring the quality into computer vision uh, uh, yeah in all applications like even our applications also they are uh, they are being used uh, you have seen those, uh, I think, on your various social media and all that. Uh, these uh, uh, these computer algo vision algorithms are being placed there that how to automatically identify the temperature of the body uh, while moving on the railway stations or airport or how to identify automatically whether there is a social distancing or not or how to find automatically whether the person has you uh, with uh, with mask or without mask so all these things are there and there is a simple pipeline you can see here uh, video framing is there you need certain kind of detection algorithms okay then you can need certain kind of merging of the algorithms you need object tracking there tracking trajectories are there then you need some kind of cluster is there uh, how they are being clustered and then application you can see there are numerous few i have taken here uh, you can see uh, visual navigation augmented reality optical character recognition uh, surveillance 3d object recognition games inspection automation human computer interface segmentation uh, games applications are enormous uh, uh, whether you want to develop it uh, for for certain purpose or uh, you are using your vision part to uh, solve certain kind of a real world issue so the you know, applications are enormous and and here everywhere in these structures you will find that the images are taken converted into some numbers and then those numbers are being uh, being operated through some mathematical arrangements to get those outcomes there uh, another application which is here, uh, which is because, uh, which is uh, on your natural language processing. So you have spoken words or written text both way. 
then we take a in, extract information out of it. So we, we can't find out the uh, information extraction and then we try to find out the similarity from the uh, our, our knowledge base. And from there, we can find out various things there. Okay, so you can see on the right hand side where are the application. We have unlabeled data, uh, which is where we data may be from web, from mails, or electronic document, or from social media. And then we take the data, we have labeled data. So you can see there, I have already written this one uh, labeled data is highly cost, unlabeled data is low cost. And then you can use uh, statistical machine learning or uh, or machine learning or AI to develop these analyzers so that you can label your unlabeled data so you can save your money. So many applications are there. A uh, few of them are shown here. Like uh, if you want to use for document summarization, if you want to filter out whether the uh, mail is a spam mail or a not spam mail, or you want to use for machine translation. And nowadays, it, this application is very common on your on even your mobile that you take a picture of uh, some written text in one language and it automatically convert you convert the things in another language. So these applications are already there uh, or you want to use these data for uh, information retrieval or you want to use these written text or spoken text for sentiment analysis, whether you are what you are saying or writing in your 20 words or five words on your on your tutor what are the sentiments uh, associated with it, whether you are working towards the positive sentiments or you are working towards the negative sentiments. So there's a, an, a, the, and there are many more applications you can think of it. Auto texting is one uh, and auto coloring is another part which comes later in, uh, in different categories and all that. And there is another then area which developed because uh, we are now interfacing uh, machine intelligence and images and data and sensors so that comes another area which highly depend on it and that is internet of things so you can see that internet of things has enormous application industrial transportation retail it building energy healthcare and you can see the domain is keep on increasing day by day and based on the same topology you can see that there is another area and uh, pure electrical engineering is developing and that one is we call it internet of energy things so all kind of energy things are connected on a common kind of platforms like building automation solar renewable energy management uh, distributed generation like energy rebates pricing microgrids smart grids big data so these things are possible because uh, we uh, all these things are possible because they generate certain level of data and we have certain level of uh, uh, certain level of uh, computing systems which uh, try to relate the information between these data points and give some kind of a conclusion or understanding of these things in much much bigger way a uh, few more things are developed and uh, uh, they are basically uh, initially when they started they are trying to uh, mimic uh, or copying your behavior of your brain and that is how your networks, neural networks, artificial neural networks, they come into the picture. Here you can see the timeline is there in front of your screen. Somewhere in 1928, uh, it's beginning. And then uh, various um, people, they uh, try to connect uh, the learning process that how your brain works, uh, how, how the learning process in the brain process and one major breakthrough comes in 1949 by HAB, one as HAB's learning. And then in 1959, it's a neuron uh, representation was there. And then somewhere 1980, uh, uh, it keep on uh, various topologies, representations, uh, keep, keep on working. You can see here from the pictures there. So uh, first ANN model that is known as MCP model, uh, that comes in 1943, and uh, then uh, then uh, Habs proposed the learning, then cognition in 1975, which adds to a new kind of a network, which is known as Hofield network, 1982, and then 
uh, with certain modifications in 9 2006 by hinton uh, deep learning comes into the picture so there are various legs you can see here and these legs are uh, you can say artificial neural network lag, statistical machine lag, dynamic machine learning lag, and each each lag is uh, contributing in one or another form of uh, modernization of these machine learning or AI based tools. So this one is a, a lot of lot of these tools are there, and now the challenge is how to use, where to use, and that is really a, a, a big challenge that which is good for what type of purpose and all that. Some applications people have already tested to prove it, like one of the application in the games where they started, they, uh, there's a game which is known as the Go game, uh, which is played with by the stones. And the point here is you have to uh, cover uh, and, and circle that particular color of stone with the different color of stone, then the color changes, and those who remain there on the board, uh, more stones who have there, the, the winner. It's a, it's, it's a strategical kind of game with if you talk about the combinations, there are numerous combinations. So it's a strategical and combinational games where many algorithms have been used. So you can see some of the uh, approaches which are being used to to develop a strong player. Uh, you can see that uh, pattern recognition being used in max method, killer heuristic, and all these things. And these are the popular uh, popular tools they have developed. To beat the to beat the humans basically. So these are the certain machines or methods being used in chess. Uh, you can see a few of uh, these uh, are there on on your screen. These methods are being used to be, beat the humans. Uh, why we are doing so? Because we want to check the computing power. Because our brain is having the extreme computing power. So how far we are away from it to develop all those things there. We have already discussed certain applications and some more applications are there like chatbots and social media and healthcare. We have already discussed. So uh, we move further on, on, on all, all these things. It's a very good area that is governance, which is being uh, used. AI is being now used uh, in a very big way in the governance of the things, whether it's agriculture or the security, healthcare, or banking or crime or disaster or traffic or public infrastructure. So it is uh, another area which opened up that how you can use uh, your AI, you can use the informations uh, to govern all these things uh, for, uh, or you can to operate these things and more and more properly. So some of the uh, more specific in those domains, uh, like if you talk about the uh, uh, healthcare, I discussed few of them. And uh, again, the like automated image diagnosis. I have seen few, like uh, like if you go today's you know, your PET scan and all these things where uh, uh, people are uh, people are working on a very uh, very uh, very deadly diseases and all that. So now the uh, machines which are there or X-ray machines, modern X-ray machines, uh, they themselves give the whole report. They generate the whole report. A person was there. Uh, in front of a machine and after some time you'll find the machine generates the report automatic even the doctor is there or not so doctor are being used to confirm those uh, findings and if there is some kind of uh, correction factor is required they recorrect the things but uh, what happened because of this all this uh, there is a big change in the thought process or understanding of the disease earlier it was not so but now some kind of uh, information being taken if we have data or uh, about uh, a person timestamp data, we can go for uh, early detection. So if and that help to save the life of the people. So uh, this one is full of full of applications. Uh, another one is uh, this area where it has been used in a bigger bigger way. That is epidemiology. So uh, and that is now it is very being challenged. You will see that last four five months. There are a lot and a lot of research papers and work people are working on to understand that how this COVID uh, is flowing and uh, moving or spreading and all these things. So how to control this one? So uh, try to understand the genomics of the, this uh, this uh, molecular analysis of this uh, this particular virus. And uh, not only this one, others are also there. 
which are we consider deadly disease which can spread in a big way create a disasters so to understand the disease and then from the understanding of the disease going further to create a medicine to overcome all this and so nowadays this one is to purely data driven study so they try to understand the uh, understand the compositions and then try to find out the various solutions uh, so that we, we can uh, reach to a faster solution about the things there so this one these are the some screenshot we can see here in may 16 how the things are spread how what are the patterns what are the possible solutions uh, and uh, then how we can we can address these things so we are using the data and using machine learning or ai techniques to find out the best proper solution so these are certain uh, trajectories and uh, we can say the peak and the second peak and third peak and likewise so we try to understand the epidemiology a lot of publication in the road traffic future will be the uh, save of energy save energy is one of the factors you can manage the traffic of your city in the most po possible way so you predict what are the peak hours and based upon you can make your uh, lights and everything you just imagine many times you feel very uh, ve not very happy when you are standing on a red light that there is no traffic but you have to you have to be still there uh, for a one minute or so so can we it might make uh, can we make it more and more automatic so that it identify the traffic flow and accordingly the the signaling system can be controlled and likewise in, similarly uh, nowadays it is now being used very common that if uh, uh, if you move on there is nobody there in the morning for 5 o'clock and you uh, move on a, on on the main road uh, very good speed okay uh, enjoying your your uh, vehicle speed capacity but after certain some, some time after half an hour or so you'll find a message that uh, you have overspeeded that particular section and uh, please submit this much of fine to this uh, this particular link or to the office because you have violated so automatic violators traffic violators speed violators and uh, and uh, another many applications in increasing the quality of the vehicles and all those things so this one is another application when we talk about the pure talk about the pure electrical engineering smart grid is full of it smart grid is nothing but a grid is there but uh, this grid is now more on the communicate uh, more on the communication side of it and uh, since if it is communication is there we can have more and more data extraction from various points and then we use all these things we can predict weather so we can predict a renewable generation we can predict the load we can predict the human behavior we can then if all these things are there then we do demand management uh, load management generation management or something like that so there are enormous application of machine learning and and all these factors because see uh, weather prediction say you can solve it by various ways you can take a prediction graphs and use image processing technique to go for further or you can take data and you apply those things and you do it that way people have used image processing for for uh, for uh, condition monitoring of a transformer uh, or you can take a put a sensor there and extract the uh, temperature and do the condition monitoring there are various ways but uh, one thing is common in all these sectors and the common thing is we are using machine learning or ai technique to solve it a uh, defense is yes it is uh, uh, one is cyber security really a challenging area because day by day uh, people are getting more aware of computing skills computing power so mm, more attacks and we need uh, we, we need more and more secure systems so more improvement all that and then warfares um, warheads uh, all are highly sophisticated accurate and they need such type of techniques there uh, we need virtual uh, platforms also there where they can where the uh, people can do some kind of practice so they can understand the things and crisis healthcare is another area target recognition is another area so these things are being used in a bigger way uh, target recognition only images are being taken images are taken at aerial images which have, have already have various issues of noise and all these things and they are filtering it out and then 
uh, identifying the objects and identifying it very accurately and then use the weapons to uh, uh, to check those things so it's a enormous application and this area is very open for it agriculture is another area where we can use images and ai in a big way uh, one is like species identification uh, green houses are there really challenging problem that i have greenhouse how to maintain the internal environment perfect for the yield of that particular crop there uh, weather prediction is another estimating mapping farmer uh, farm management crop disease treatment and all these are the various issues there uh, which are which can be taken as a agenda for the research fund some of the work because uh, we are uh, uh it's in the next uh, 20 25 minutes i'll share what we have done and uh, you can you can work on the on those or you can extend some addition to that work so some work which we have done i would like to share for next 20 25 minutes and then i'll take your questions there so one of the work which we have worked here is basically your green computer interface uh, here you can see a person is having a map uh, wearing a uh, cap there where your uh, sensors are placed so these sensors basically take the signals from there and those signals are press processed on the computing system and where you can see the wheelchair is there which is an automated wheelchair uh, so uh, it can uh, he or she can control the movement of that wheelchair by thought process so we have developed half part of it that is capturing the signal processing uh, and inferring from there that part is already being done, tested on the robots. Uh, the wheelchair part is yet to be completed. So this one is a really helpful for the medical people. So medical person, so you can see here, we started long back on working on this project in 2006. So signals are taken from these cap. There's nothing like we are putting inside the head. These are all surface mounted sensors. So they give us signals like this. These are the time signals, timestamp signals which can be filtered there, and then you can process it. So this one earlier is one work. This one, we, we did it with the hospitals, SMS hospital, where you can identify the IQ level of a person. So you can easily identify that what is the IQ level just by, so what is being done in this problem is uh, we asked a person, uh, we, gave, we gave the person some 10 questions to answer without speaking, and he answered it, and then, uh, those signals were taken there and then they are processed and then they are classified that high, based on the IQ level. And then we asked the medical expert also that, okay, now can you identify the IQ level based upon these 10 questions and our results and the medical results, uh, person, doctor results are in alignment with each other. So this one is one kind of application. There are enormous application of this, uh, this such type of uh, work if you are able to extract the information uh, in your brain in the most accurate way, you can have many, many applications there. Uh, one of this work which we uh, uh, did with IIT Delhi and MIT people, and that is basically on the on the seizure detection. So we try to, we have certain kind of data. I'll show you the video if, he, if it is visible on your screen. You can see on, very on the right extreme side, signal, brain signals are coming. And these are the thermal images which are being generated of various frequency bands so that it will give us an idea that, okay, you can see that when the seizure is there, then how the thermal images are reacting to it. And the job here is to find out the origin, origin, of, the, uh, origin of that particular uh, pain or, or, or correctly identification that what is happening here. So this one is another kind of application which we did it. Uh, here again, the image processing and the signal processing and your machine learning part comes into the picture. Uh, this one is exoskeleton, uh, which is developed by the students here. But this one is a very crude model. We, you can say it's a beginning model. The photograph is a beta version. Here, uh, the important part is the sensors are placed on the wrist and the arm, which sense the muscle activity. Okay, and then uh, that muscle activity is taken or passed, passed to the processing unit, which uh, help us uh, help the you can see the motors and the gear arrangements there to 
perform certain kind of a rehabilitation exercise so that the person can have a, uh, can be rehabilitated muscle power can be regenerated or to support that particular particular arm to uh, to uh, give that much of power this one is another work which is being done and this one is the lab is there uh, that is gait analysis which was funded by ministry of science and technology and here uh, we try to analyze the gait and just understand what is a gait uh, gait is basically how we move okay so the our moving pattern is known as gait and uh, it has a lot and lot of applications sports is full of it but healthcare is also there and i think many of you are aware of uh, like harbhajan mutthe ya murlidan action and all these things so those are the action recognition and that is the same being done here application of uh, gait is uh, uh, huge and we worked on few of them so we have this laboratory uh, you can anytime anybody wish to look over it not in this pandemic condition but later on you can visit uh, to raman lab mnit so we have these facilities here data we have generated developed first indian gait data and we are passing it to many researchers throughout the country to work on this one so there are four cameras are there which are kept there and the person is asked to move on and then uh, the pattern is recognized okay so you can see here the video is there so video is taken and then that particular video is converted into frames and then that frames they are pre processed like editing and removing the noise and all these things and then from there uh, marker various topologies we have used we have used marker based uh, marker less and all those things there so they the job is to identify the various patterns when we walk and those are the basically at the last you can see they are the gait kinematics that okay when we move what is the movement of my knee or my ankle or my shoulder so that i can do rest of the can i do certain kind of a, uh, processing on it so this video give you a better results uh, and the, just this work was i mean it's like uh, matlab uh, framework is uh, there on your screen uh, you can use it in any language maybe python or anything like that so you can see here the frame is uploaded on your screen and uh, very soon you will find uh, we have developed a gui for it so you can see the gui in front of so this one is lab view and lab part and you can see there is uh, background is many objects are there so all signals are zero nobody is there on your, in on the screen this and now the person enter in front of the cameras the coordinates starts coming in front of your screen you can see the coordinates are coming and at the bottom you can see the uh, trunk angle hip angle knee angle uh, with thigh angle leg angle foot angle with time stamps are they are coming and once the person moves away now this one is your this one is your signature and uh, and the theory says that you cannot copy it nobody can copy uh, anybody's uh, gait and now this one has a, a lot of information uh, security is a very obvious one because this one is your unique feature but there are medical applications uh, means like some research i have seen that they have find out uh, whether the person is diabetic or not by observing these signatures likewise many such applications are already there all these are image processing and machine learning combination of all those two and and to the health care as such so i'm just moving a bit uh, yeah as we have time another research work which is going on right now in the lab that is knee osteoarthritis ah uh, yeah very surprising results are there if you follow the medical data uh, that is in indian context every uh, male up after the age of around the age of 45 or above and every female around the age of 40 and above every means like that makes a big big uh, big uh, statement uh, so let's increase it a bit further to make it 100 every female after the age of 45 and every male after the age of 50 they are suffering of one or another form of arthritis really a very challenging problem and knee arthritis is one of the biggest problem people are facing with and and we here we try to develop a, we propose a new hypothesis and the hypothesis is 
trying to identify the things based on the muscle activities. You can see the GUI in front of your screen. This setup is already there in the lab where we sense the muscle activities and try to find out arthritis is there or not. And you can see this one is knee joint figure. We try to develop a system. Uh, I mean, it's like here to support the doctors and all that. So here you can easily, here we are able to identify whether the leg is a particular person is having arthritis or not. So this work is going on. This work we have started uh, very, this, these are the slides and some work which people have done. We are also working in the domain of drug discovery. So we have many, many things there. We have uh, like genome pins are there. From there you use some machine learning techniques and to identify uh, that, okay, what is the proposed drug for this type of genomic sequence or, or, or and all that. So this one, these are the some some concepts which I'm showing you are uh, taken from research article, and uh, this is another area where we are working on. So uh, these are the various medicines being used. So TMDU, they are working on this domain already. So these are the some findings from TMDU that uh, there are more than hundred genes for Alzheimer's disease, and which drug is good for that one. This one is again one one, one work which we have patented long back on us. On, on your uh, your uh, mouse uh, on your hand free uh, systems basically using your simple camera to control the control the whole process of the system human modeling yes we are working and human modeling is the same which is what we are what, what i discussed in the advance about uh, in, in the earlier slides about the kosinski work that is okay and let understand it more more bigger way so like this one is the population there then we put this is the population. We filter it out, use some image processing technique and AI that, okay, how many of them are have wearing certain kind of dresses or patterns there. Then further filter it out, how many of them are having suitcases and all that. Then further filter it out, how many of them are having a like. Now, th these are concept figures, not actual figures that wearing a helmet. And yes, if it is so, then we can say, yes, that person is an engineer. So this is how the modeling being done. Um, human modeling, we call it, we connect, we take certain certain features and then try to connect these features to come out the information about you yourself. Uh, this one is another work uh, which was uh, being done, patented also. Uh, this one is basically uh, uh, inverter which is being developed. So the concept is same. You can, um, you can understand the concept here. Uh, in electrical, uh, when we are connecting a grid, there is a com point of uh, common coupling. So there we put an inverter, microgrid. So here the inverter has to operate into two different modes. When it is connected to the grid in a different mode, and when it is not connected to the grid when it's a different mode. The concept we take it is, here is same like our heartbeat signals. So what we do, we take measure the signals every time and try to predict it that when the grid is available and when there is a fault, so it's not available. So that my inverter is ready in advance that, okay, at this instant, something is going to happen. I have to change my mode of operation. So this one is again your machine learning, a good example of machine learning and the signals uh, as a live case study there. So this work was uh, being reported in various research articles also. If somebody is interested, please visit my website and from there you can download this research articles and these PPTs and some codes are also given there. Similarly, uh, another good example of a smart sir, loads. Sir, good morning, sir. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interpret, sir. sir shall I uh, ask one question, sir? We can take the question at the end. I think that will be a good, good idea. Oops. Thank you. Sir. Okay, let me finish the things because the time is a limit. Then we can have a good uh, time for uh, questionary. Okay. 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 Sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, this one is another area, smart loads. So just imagine that your tube light is saying you and that, okay, uh, my life is over or your refrigerator is saying you that uh, when you purchased me, I, I was five star, but with time, now it's a 10 years, uh, uh, my consumption is more, I'm no more five star, I'm one star. So if you continue using me, okay, I'll keep on cooling your things, but I consume more power, so it's better to replace me. So those, that, those are known as smart loads when loads start saying the telling you the information about it okay so this one is the concept of uh, for a smart home a smart home or smart loads and all that smart home or smart meters so smart meters 
controls everything give you de detail anything connecting to the cloud communication and all those things are there various forms of a smart meters are being developed by many students from undergrad to phd scholars and in industry people this part here we have taken a, in a different form things are sensed we implemented three four concepts here for home automation is one cloud computing is the another and and the hn is the third one so that's a uh, that's one uh, another research work is going on uh, we are working with the Udaipur Agriculture University, one of my scholars is working on it, and that is greenhouse. It's a very typical problem because the crops uh, for the proper yield of a crop, we need the proper uh, environment inside it. So outside it may be very, uh, very, very hot or very cold, but inside we need to maintain proper air, proper humidity, proper temperature, uh, and and uh, uh, interesting part is uh, they are highly non-linear. There is no any very good mathematical relation between the things. So, so how to make those things fully automated and all these things? Uh, that is one work uh, which is currently going on with at MNIT basically. Uh, this one is a good example of reinforcement learning. Uh, you can see here uh, if I, the video is there, so I can show you the video uh, uh, if it is visible to you. Uh, you can see a bot is there, okay, and it is moving and it is identifying the object and okay uh, taking our turns and moving further and, and reaching to reaching to to the object so you say this is nothing big because if you go to the market uh, you just go and purchase any toy car uh, toy car costing 150 just put a hand uh, in front of it it automatically take a turn uh, here the concept is different you can see there are two cameras at the top they are working as eyes basically we try to build a single camera if you are using or you are using a single eye then you cannot find the depth you you can just test it by single using single eye you cannot find the depth of the uh, images but if you are using two eyes you can find out how what is the depth of the uh, so here the concept is to develop eye and brain of it and if you want to develop at your laboratory what is being done here uh, you, we are using two cameras to take two to uh, image from the two angles First, second thing, then accept features. Third, we try to find out the depth in the images. Fourth, the, the bot is very, you can see here, the processing power is less. So we use cloud computing. So at MNIT, we have a very cloud computing facility. And there we have distributed computing facility. So these images are being taken, passed to the cloud. Com distributed computing is being done there. And the signal come back in the real time frame to decide whether this object has to move left, right, or front. And the interesting part is there is no teaching here. It's a reinforcement learning. So we run this board more than lag times. It hit, it learned. Next time it hit, it learned. Some Next time it avoid first object, but hit the second, it learned. We move, did a lot and lot of rounds. So in, And then we perform various case studies. First case is this. Objects are fixed, bot is moving. Second case is uh, uh, different objects are there, different type of object, and the bot is moving. And third case is bot is also moving, and objects are also moving. So just to realize the whole concept of uh, of your your uh, Google car and all that. So this one is another work which we've done there. Uh, this one is on the robotic fish. I'm just winding out a, a bit fast so that I can take your questions. I, I know you have many questions there. Uh, this one we developed uh, uh, there, uh, uh, developed it for the National Institute of Singapore. That uh, the challenge is uh, very different here. The fish, this one is one part of it. I'm not showing the complete part. Uh, the fish was being developed and it uh, has to move in the water where it has to see the things, sense the things, maintain its stability, uh, and pass the signal outside. So that's a multi-fold, multi-challenge problem, which was being taken. This one is another one. In this case, uh, everything is developed in the lab environment. We have, uh, in normal lab, we have these facilities to develop these whole structures. Uh, we have 3D printers and all these things. Uh, challenge here is, uh, here is, you can see there are a lot and lot of joints and they are moving. So the degree of freedom is 12 here, which is very high degree. And, uh, and just to see whether the system is more stable or not, so stability in terms of various things, camera is capturing the images, 
try to extract the coordinates, try to pass the signals, and still we are in the process of maintaining its uh, its uh, its stability and all these things. So here you can see that the, the leg movement is uh, body movement is perfectly like a human. So it's not like a borrowed one uh, from somewhere. Uh, the thing, the degree of freedom here is high uh, because we have degree at uh, one can you can have two three degree at when your ankle joint and then knee joint and at your hip joint and the job is to maintain it as well as like this uh, this one is another one uh, because this one is a model uh, which is uh, okay 15 minutes just give me uh, three four minutes and i'll wind it up uh, this one is same as uh, you can have, have your sophia so it's a beta version which we developed here you can see uh, the i'm not running the video video is still there uh, you can see the face is there and uh, and camera is there. So this uh, we student they call it Basanti gave the name Basanti. So she will uh, interact with you, identify with you. Uh, so perfectly working with you. That means what uh, working on NLP because she is listening and answering your questions. Uh, image processing because she is identifying you wherever you go. You she follow you, give your emotions to your emotions. Uh, and then uh, where that means image processing is working and uh, at the back back hand all machine learning tools are they are working sound system is there that means she's identifying doing some kind of calculations and then converting those signals back to audio signals and talk to you that also uh, these videos are also available on the site you can see uh, time is one kind of a constraint so i have to move further on it and this one is uh, uh, one another uh, showcase of your. Uh, uh, I, I'll show you. I think I can. I, sh I can show you some part of it. Uh, I'm not sure how much audio signal is coming to you. Yeah. So it's it's still only audio signal is coming here. So it perfectly uh, give the answers and the queries, uh, whatever you ask. And uh, search engine is we have used Google as a search engine to search the things if you have placed some query. And uh, this one is one one we have developed. We have designed our own uh, and quadcopters and all these uh, things because uh, it's now uh, one can say more popular among the students also. But the design we have done and last year means like this year it all stopped but yeah last year we were the uh, best um, we, we won we were the uh, as a leader in this uh, drone racing and we were the first one in indian students so we can see one student is standing there having some control he represented india at china international uh, drone racing so we won around uh, 15 on uh, drone racing uh, there and we develop our own drone, which is very stable. We are running this one in an in a internal environment where uh, images are captured. You can see the drone is very stable. It's a very small in size, a very stable drone. Uh, even you can move, pass it through a small controlled window. We are working on the swarm drones right now. And uh, here it identify the, uh, you can say, you can say the, uh, signals signatures and then take certain actions automatically also so it can be a manual uh, as well as it can be a automated one so these are the few things when, because when you develop these things you have to con connect your uh, machine learning your image processing and all these things more and more work are there which we are still going on i'm skipping this part now uh, because we are at the end of this one so language biometrics disaster computer vision medical uh, yeah thank you from my side on the presentation part uh, i'm more open on the questions now because i can expect more and more questions there uh, good morning sir yeah now i can take your questions yeah uh, sir um, it's a very nice explanation by you sir it's a very good um, informative session uh, first thank of all before that sir uh, yeah. Sir, uh, my I am also working with uh, related to EEG signal data set, sir. Right. Um, related to find out that sleep disorder. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so, sir, my doubt is, sir, uh, regarding some data set, uh, I am not uh, get the annotation files related to physionet data sets. Uh, 
that um, information is uh, uh, in the extension of edf file it is already um, going to be read it but the annotation file is in other format that cannot be i am going to be reach out that annotation file uh -huh. sir have you any time you go and go through sir that fijonet any data sets you have used sir either emg or ecg or EMG. see see uh, the notation uh, because uh, when we talk about notation uh, there are things like when people uh, do these experiments on the real people so they have their own machines okay and yeah. on their machines when they take the signals they uh, give the input at the same time means like uh, my machine is there and it is storing certain thing and the doctor is there it he or she is watching it and at the same time it uh, they write down the comments on it and then how the software of that machine is converting that notation that is a basically totally depend we also face the same kind of similar kind of a problem uh, mm. when we worked on the initial data when we take from the hospital and then we revisit and then we put it we requested them that okay can we have that uh, can we change the data format so luckily we uh, we are working here with the hospital which are which is available here only we are able to convert the notation file in a different data format and then we are able to do it otherwise mm -hmm. it's very difficult because we are not we are not sure enough that what is the format they are using actually yes yes Once, so that's really a challenge and that is always a challenge when we talk about supervised learning kind of system yeah, yeah so that's sir, you, uh, you have uh, any easy data set sir with you related to leveling with uh, annotation any files are there sir in your website uh, yeah it, it it will it may be there in the lab maybe some student is working on it so th those things are there the, uh, you you can find out some even notated data eg signal uh, uh, on, on kaggle also they they have given you okay. can take it like if, if you want to test your algorithm you can download it from there and you can test your algorithms over those okay thank you sir thank you sir yes yes please yeah uh, sir your uh, website uh, kindly mention the yeah uh, yeah my, uh, okay uh, i'll write uh, on the link here so that uh, everybody can everybody can see that okay uh, one give me one second uh, so from here uh, you can download many pptes uh, many uh, codes are also there and some algorithms and detail about some of the papers are also there so you can download it from there yeah any any more question yeah please feel free or give me certain idea to work on you can raise your question uh, or you write your question i'll try to answer it Uh, sir another question sir uh, uh, sir related to any deep learning uh, implementation sir uh, though yeah. it is though it is in the form of signal uh, and, uh, but the input pattern is required for deep learning is a image so is there any um, method is there sir to convert that signal to image sir uh, you, you you have signal that is image no yes sir Sig signal is a two dimensional image Uh, yes, it is actually one-dimensional signal, sir. EEG signal. Ah, the, sir. But if I, if I can use any CNN model or either uh, uh, any other deep learning model, then how I can use those uh, signals, sir? Yeah, Santo. Actually, your signal is two 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 dimension because on one side it's a it's a, uh, your uh, your amplitude. On another side, it's a time stamping. Time time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now it's a image. So now you can take it as a image. people okay. have done it you you'll find very good research articles on 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 such type of uh, such type of uh, 1d 1d or 2d images they are trying to use uh, these deep learning techniques but uh, the again the suggestion here is uh, why to use deep learning for such uh, such type of processing because for the time stamp data we have many other algorithms which already prove better so unnecessary i am increasing my complexity and then i am trying to solve it by a complex method so better is to make your algorithms as simple as possible so that you have fast solutions and accurate solutions any more yeah, yeah. my pleasure yeah. any any more question
any query means like uh, maybe maybe uh, innovative or vague or whatever it i'll help you to answer it any query because i kept this last 10 minutes for the questions no more questions question is what are the different features expected from image using cnn uh, uh, and the answer is very simple what you wish to uh, take out from it so so uh, depending upon those it will do extraction of the features and it it will it will not show you as such like you have features are extracted and these are the features taken separately and then you are so deep learning there you are passing it and something is happening inside and you are coming out of the things okay so what is happening inside uh, that depends totally upon your input and output uh, mapping you want to do it okay and and if you are said so there are two ways i either you take the data find out the features using some kind of features techniques and then if your features features are more go for feature reduction and use simple structures there okay so that is basically uh, there you need a uh, good uh, knowledge of the systems and the experts and the people there or the second way is you take the image and then tell this is the output this, what is the output if it is labeled then it automatically find out those relations and learn of its own and then when you give the new image to it it automatically identify it so that's the difference between the deep learning approach and the simple approach uh, another question is what can be the possible feature extracted from eg signal yeah okay uh, uh, signals when you talk about the signals normally uh, okay uh, two things are straightforward uh, uh, one is your amplitude and another one is time stamps then your next thing uh, to it is uh, which domain you want to use you want to solve this in time domain okay then time domain parameters you want to do it in a frequency domain then you have to go for the frequency signal because it is a repetitive signal so you can go for that then then you can have one peak another peak the relations between them and then if there is any twist there those relations between them there are many things depending upon type of the data type of the signal and the type of application there you need to find out various things according to that so that is that is uh, that is what is being required for any type of signal or uh, any kind of images what you want to do out of it that is more important yeah any uh, okay yeah thank you thank you deepak ji any more questions Hello, sir. Yeah, yes, please. Yes, please. So, if you want to do some uh, forensic analysis using uh -huh. uh, deep learning, so right. what are the different uh, models that I can use, sir? See, you can you can use any type of uh, deep learning model for it. Uh, what you want is when you are talking about the for forensic, uh, uh -huh. you want to uh, you want to label few areas, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you need to, you, you need to see first uh, that pipeline you have to develop that first how to label it okay so i think if you have watched some ten video or people have shown that okay if this is a car they put a uh, green box out box of it when wherever the car goes the box is there so similarly you need to understand that okay if you have an image in that image how to label those areas okay that is first thing second thing is say if i am taking say i want to check the thumb impressions so if i have image uh, i have certain image where there are three four thumb impression so first job is to put a put a recognize those thumb impression first second thing is then extract individually those thumb impression with, with label of those boxes say box 1 this is the thumb impression image box 2 is this box 3 is this then now i have data where a lot of thumb impressions are there and then i process a uh, mechanism similarity score or any kind of machine learning or statistical method that to match these thumb impressions and then the outcome will be those all the boxes will be labeled by the name of the people whose thumb impressions are there 
So this is a simple, simple pipeline I have talked about. You can use many of them. So here I'm talking about that we are doing manual, we are doing the things in a one way. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Because you have trained that deep learning over say thousands of thumb impressions, it automatically find it out and do the job for you. Something like that. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Any other? Okay, I, I think uh, no more questions. So can I request uh, the coordinator to close the session? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I Deepak Kumar from Pondima Institute of Engineering Technology. I extend my sincere thanks to Rajesh Kumar, sir, Professor Electrical Engineering Department, MNIT. It was indeed a very informative session. And we have got good demonstration of the ongoing and completed projects at MNIT. And we have also found uh, very beneficial for future research areas. So I'm very thankful to you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Prof. And there is one question from Gaurav that uh, I want to ask question from reinforcement learning. Yes, please, Gaurav, what is your question? If you are there, then Gaurav, you can raise the question, else you can mail me, I'll answer your question. Oh, yeah, yeah. OK, uh, I want to understand how to implement uh, what, which which part. OK, OK, he's saying that he will mail me. OK, so thank you, uh, Purnima Group. Uh, thank you, the HOD and the director, and all the people who are listening to me uh, since uh, more than an hour or so. So uh, if you have any query, uh, I have already posted my mail ID. Uh, and if you want to join in a collaboration with my lab and with me, you're always welcome. My lab is always open 24 cross 7. And it's open for everyone. So yeah, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Rajesh, sir, for this thank wonderful you. session. So in this way, we are completing day session one, day one. And now the next session is scheduled at 11.45. This session is on image steganography and implementation of steganography. It will be taken by Dr. Mehak Purana from the North Cape University, Gurgaon. So now you, we can reassemble at 11.45 or you can be here only. We are going to have a 15 minutes break. And after 15 minutes, we are going to start session two of day two. So thank you very much to all the participants participants for attending the first session. And uh, now uh, you can leave and you can rejoin at 11.45. Thank you very much.